Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Statistics. Here we're going to learn how to use what we call a Z-chart table, or you might also hear it called a standard normal curve table. So I've hinted a few different times, uh, and I've kind of outright tried to tell you and prepare you that basically what you're going to be doing when you solve a lot of statistical problems is you're really going to want to know what the area under that normal curve is. And so you can calculate it by hand if you want to use calculus, but most of the rest of us want to use tables in a book because it's much easier and faster. Uh, and that's all fine, but usually you have to convert your problem, your normal curve, to a standard normal curve, and then you use the table. And we did that in the last section. All right. Um, so the table that you have in your book might look very slightly different than the, what I'm going to show you here. Um, what I want to emphasize here is this lesson, we're really going to show you how to use the table or how to use the most common types of uh, statistical table for the standard normal curve uh, here. Your table might look slightly different. I just encourage you to get familiar with your table, the one that you're going to be able to use on your exam. It should be very, very similar to what I'm showing you um, here. So uh, the first thing to kind of keep, keep in mind, I've said it a few times, is when you're doing problems with normal distribution, there's infinite shapes and sizes of the normal distribution because you have a mean and you have a standard deviation, which is going to govern the shape of it. We convert it to different z-scores. Uh, we, we convert it to a standard normal distribution so we can uh, use our table. So for instance, I'm not going to give you an actual problem yet, but in many cases, let's say you might have a problem that ends up boiling down after you convert it to the standard normal distribution. You might have um, a, normal, a standard normal distribution that might look like something like this. And in your particular problem, you find out that uh, here you have some value of negative z because this is, let's say, zero. This is positive z scores and these are negative z scores. You might find out in the course of your problem that for whatever it is you're trying to calculate, you're trying to find the area under this curve uh, to the left like this. Now, what I want to point out to you is the table that I'm going to show you in this lesson, along with 90% of all the tables that you'll find in your textbooks, they're going to give you... What you do is you end up looking up the z-score, which is a number, like negative 1.5, let's say, for z. And what it's going to give you is the area from this point of z to negative infinity. In other words, it'll give you the shaded area here from whatever value I look up at z off to the left. All right. So every now and then you'll get a weird chart that gives you the area to the right of z. But almost every chart out there, when you look up a value of z and you find the value in the table, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, and you, you get the area underneath that curve, it's giving you the area from that value of z on to the left. Now remember, this curve never really touches the x-axis, or this axis down here. So it's, 